Now, away from uh, the conversation on interest rates, but I'm thinking we are going to actually hear the comments of one of our financial analysts who is here to talk about social media. Let's now get into that uh, conversation about social media and how it's impacting businesses, uh, politics as well as the social space. Now, social networking or social media has crept into our lives like no other technology revolution in the recent past. The social media revolution has completely transformed how we live our lives. And in this same context, newsrooms have felt the impact of social media on different uh, facets of news processing, production, as well as broadcast. Four years ago, I engaged traditional media practitioners on the new media tools. And today, those same insights remain largely relevant. The impact that social media has had on the news industry, particularly news distribution, cannot go unnoticed. People online now more than ever are reading, monitoring and most importantly sharing news on their devices with their Facebook and Twitter accounts and with countless other social media digital tools. Social media has undeniably revolutionized the newsroom in various ways and evidence to that is Standard Group. Traditionally, it was the journalist goes out to collect the story, puts it out through the medium and sends it to the audience. And today, there's no clear cut process where it starts because the first tweet about an accident, about a plane crash comes from the person traditionally considered an audience. Television, radio and print newsrooms have not remained the same since the social media revolution. Social media has really worked well for those of us in the trade of business journalism because we are able to pick what that is happening somewhere that you are not there and use that information now to develop a bigger news that we use to educate or influence the decisions that are happening in the country. Most of the stories that we run now are, are basically generated or driven through the social media by the way we would say gauge them and, and, and know what they want. Social media has contributed yeah, to our popularity out there. It has contributed to our feedback. Um, the, it's that link, yeah? It's that link um, of me being behind the desk and the other person being on the other side of the line, yeah? I get to know what they're thinking. I get to know what kind of stories they like to read. For the years social media platforms have been in existence, newsrooms without a doubt have a duty to draw the line between professional and ethic broadcasts, prints and postings with factual information to that from citizen journalists. A person who is not grounded well in journalism or broadcast training cannot send you pictures that you can use you know, without editing, without a caveat to it. So. They have the one aspect of alerting us of what has happened. But we have the owners as journalists who are trained to engage in ethics that do we publish this, where are the border marks, what do we allow the public to watch, what do we allow the public to see. The print media that is perceived to be the most affected by the entrance of social media tools and networks seems to have devised means to remain relevant to her readership. A little early on, our readership was older, so they were, they were online. We were getting about 45 and above. But in the last like four or five months, I'm getting very young guys who are 18, 19, to 25, uh, commenting, giving us feedback, which means we're reaching a younger audience. And I could say my father, who is 76, reads Crazy Monday, and my son, who is 12, reads Crazy Monday. So I think we are sort of shaping the whole crowd. Social media's popularity is predicted on sharing content and data. In fact, 30 million pieces of content, for instance, were shared across social media platforms in the year 2010 across the globe. But what could the challenge be with social media in newsrooms? The biggest challenge I think newsrooms face today is when you have cases of litigation arising out of pictures, out of stories tweeted through your platform. And this could be just an omission. If you make a mistake, that you give wrong figures, that you go to market with information that is right, then what is predominantly called around here Kenyans on Twitter will be in your case. So it gives you that element that you must always be precise, 
you must be factual, and at all times you must be on point with the kind of news or information you are delivering. Averagely, social media respondents use media tools more than two hours per day, which means one in three people that use social media tools are following, sharing, posting, or reading news and information from news sources. So how are broadcast and print newsrooms taking advantage of this energetic generation? We have two sorts of audiences, the guys in the village and the urban crowd. The urban crowd is with it. They are tweeting, they are on Facebook, and you have to be, you know, you have to be in touch with them. And, and by crawling around, you know what, what, what works and what doesn't. Are you a journalist and desire to venture into news reporting and broadcast? Here is a message for you. In fact, in the media houses today, if you come for an interview and ask you for your Twitter account, I want to see how many tweets you've done, I want to see how you tweet, because I'll use that to assess whether you're a good journalist or not. I think now every editor has to uh, crawl on social media. You have to be on Facebook, you have to be Twitter, to know what's happening, you know what guys want, so to keep in touch. Newsrooms such as the Standard Group have dedicated an entire online department to specifically satisfy the growing audience that since the evolution of social media has created higher demand for knowledge allowing many a Kenyan surf the internet and connect with the rest of the world through news sources. Joy Doreen Bira for KTN in Nairobi. Okay, that was four years ago. And if you listen to that story, you probably will see that some of, in fact, not just some, most of those issues are still relevant to today's uh, social media business. Now, joining us in studio, we have uh, Rita Njaguna, who is a partner of Social Media Week in Nairobi that is going to be happening uh, this September. And we also have Steve Biko, who is a financial analyst and financial blogger. Uh, if you've seen at Soko Analyst on Twitter, that's him. He's on my extreme left. And we also have Moses Kemi Barrow, who is the founder for Dot Survey. Now, Dot Survey, I think, is a company that one would comfortably say was the first company in Kenya, or among the first companies in Kenya, to go big on social media. So, Moses, I'll start with you. Take us back in time. Uh, when was this that you actually realized social media is something big that we can leverage on, or leverage on, for that matter? Uh, thank you. Um, I think social media has actually been around longer than, you know, the Facebooks and the Twitters and so forth. I mean, back in the day, yeah. um, we had websites like, you know, Yahoo and GeoCities that had uh, community, what they used to call community websites. And you'd have people sort of sharing stuff, having discussions, you know, putting photos. And I think those were precursors to what is today the modern social media. Mm -hmm. um, and back then, I think there wasn't really much commercial activity around it. It was all very experimental. And, you know, sometime in sort of the late, um, you know, sort of 2007, 2008, that's when we sort of saw the emergence of MySpace and, and uh, Twitter and Facebook. Yes. And even then it was very nascent. You didn't get many people actually using it that much. And it was very hard to tell companies that, you know, this was a place where they needed to play because it all looked like fun and games. Mm -hmm. So I think from that period, which is, you know, almost 10 years ago, you know, now um, in Kenya, I think Facebook has about 5.5 million people. If you look across YouTube, uh, Twitter, and so forth, I'd say, you know, somewhere in the region, about nine million Kenyans are using social media. Right. And I think a big part of the growth has been the adoption of, you know, fast internet. Um, the smartphones are a big enabler of mm -hmm. social. Um, latest numbers suggest that uh, about 10 million Kenyans are now using smartphones, and social and smartphones tend to go hand in hand. So I think, yeah, that's sort of in the trajectory uh, to date, uh, from where we started and where we are today, and really. You can't have a conversation about, uh, you know, digital media without talking about social mm -hmm. and how it's also impacting traditional media. Right. Um, well, you've talked about all most of the social media platforms, but you haven't talked about LinkedIn. Um, how big was LinkedIn then, and how much has it grown, or do you think it has stagnated over the years? Uh, LinkedIn is huge. I mean, they were just acquired by Microsoft recently. Yeah. Um, I think the global footprint is about 450 million users. Uh, in Kenya, I think 1.5 million people are on LinkedIn. So it is one of the bigger ones in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, although, you know, LinkedIn tends to be more suit and tie uh, versus uh, social media on platforms like Facebook and Twitter, which are more informal. So, yes, for sure it's huge. And, you know, people, most professionals today would have their profiles there. All right. Uh, let me move to Steve Biko. Steve, you are actually big when it comes to uh, 
breaking business news online uh, that is on almost all your platforms. So from your perspective, where have we come from in terms of business? How much have we grown in terms of uh, having an impact in business news on social media? I think um, when you look at it, the way you put it, back then in 2006, six, seven, there was nothing really much in terms of um, digital engagement and business. Yeah. But in the last four years, a lot of disruptions have actually forced businesses to actually look at the element of convergence mm -hmm. and see the need to be able to understand and be able to uh, monitor behavioral, consumer behavioral aspects. Yeah. And uh, behavioral trends have actually been changing because right now, now the power is actually in the consumer. So what you've seen is that um, many companies are actually now adapting digital engagement, not necessarily because they want to, but because that's where the consumer is. And um, that's what was missing back then, you know, whereby uh, companies, they would, you know, channel out communication for you to listen to. But right now it's the consumer dictating what they want, what they want to do, what they want to be told. And then you're seeing companies trying to adapt platforms that they can be able to channel. As he's put it, like for example, LinkedIn is a um, suit and tie. And um, I think what's changing is um, if I want a job, I'll put my CV really, really well on, 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 on LinkedIn and hope that I can be able to share it on Facebook and, and Twitter and, 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 and um, you know, to be, able to be able to push it. Yeah. So for me, I think a lot of uh, growth has happened in the last five years. And I think there's more going to happen, especially with Uber, which is actually changing how an app is used in terms of uh, commuting, in terms of changing logistics. A lot of companies are going to see how to change this. And um, I think we're yet to see better and more disruptions. And I think he's, 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 he's more involved in the techie aspect of it. Yeah. For me, I'm more into monitoring behavioral aspects of consumers. So I can be able to tell that um, as, we, we, as, as, as phone companies develop more better processing phones that can do a lot more. We're able to see a lot, um, a lot of disruptions coming forward. And um, what I'm waiting to see, especially, because um, you're able to monitor consumer behavior, especially in the retail aspect. Once proper disruption is actually done in retail sector, then you can be able to see the whole aspect of um, change. Because mm -hmm. right now, financial services are a bit um, minimal. We're seeing uh, Uber doing a lot in terms of logistics. But um, I think we're here to grasp proper trends in, in consumer behavior. All right. Um, let me now come to Rita. Rita, you have seen quite a number of, or at least witnessed, some of the social media summits that today are happening, I think, if, if not on a daily basis, they're happening on a weekly basis. And uh, there's so many people who are taking advantage of social media platforms, commercializing social media as well. And uh, from, from your perspective, you're among the organizers of the Social Media Week that is coming up uh, in just about a month's time. Um, how exactly do you think people or what do you think people are not getting right about social media in terms of the commercial aspects? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, what we've realized and uh, one of the reasons why Social Media Week is coming on board is the fact that we need to understand that uh, what we talk Social Media Week is not the same, the, uh, sorry, the social media. How you talk to someone on Twitter or how you talk to someone on YouTube or how you talk to someone on Facebook has to be different. Uh, most of corporates, we can say just uh, have this notion that whatever I put on Twitter or whatever I put on Facebook will still work, but it doesn't. So we need to be able to benchmark with what's happening out there. How do you humanize the social, the social, social media part of it? Mm -hmm. How do you understand what you should put out there? Uh, do I start in the morning by saying good morning or do I start selling, uh, is it airtime or do I talk about um, uh, open a bank account? You know. It has to be, how do you say good morning in the morning? How do you talk to people? Mm -hmm. It's how do you understand the normal consumer as a corporate? Uh, as Steve was saying, it's about the consumer. It's no longer about the corporate now because the consumer is quite knowledgeable. It's the content you push out there. Is it the right content that you're pushing out there? What is the engagement? It's not about likes only anymore. It's about how do you engage with the consumer? So corporates are actually, from the social media week, will be able to understand how do I actually commercialize my product on social media and take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. As you've been told by Moses, there are over 9 million people on social media. How do corporates, instead of putting up big billboards, how do you take advantage of social media and actually right. talk to that consumer? Okay. Yes. Uh, Moses, I'll come back to you. Um, you know, you are the takey here. Uh, do you think we're going to come to a time where uh, social media maybe will become irrelevant or it's now the new normal uh, that we're looking at in uh, the digital content uh, realm? Uh, personally, I think, well, social media has, in a way has always been there, you know, yeah. even before technology, people talking to people, people 
um, you know, getting referrals for products, you know, opinions and so forth. People have always been social. I think what social media did is it amplified it. It mm -hmm. made it more visible. It made it more relevant. Uh, and I think, you know, there are certain things that make, you know, social media really huge. I think one of them really has to be the, the advent of the smartphone. Mm -hmm. uh, the smartphone has been a major enabler of social media. I think the second thing has to be that, um, you know, the cost of data has gone down significantly over the years. Mm -hmm. um, and the third thing I think is really the consumer, right? The consumer family has a voice. And if you've ever been on social media in Kenya and you see mm -hmm. what people say about brands, you know, positive or negative, uh, the consumer now is able to talk back, which in, you know, previous prior to this was not possible. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's a, it's a, I don't think it's a, it's a uh, temporary thing. I think it's going to stay and I think it's only going to get bigger. Mm -hmm. And I think increasingly um, another trend we're seeing in the country is the rise of what they call the digital influencer. The people yes. who with their own um, capacity, especially people in the media like yourself, you know, have, you know, sometimes over a million people who follow them and people who listen to them. Mm -hmm. um, so again, you know, you have these individuals who are almost like an, a media of one. And, you know, in fact, they are influencing how consumers are deciding to buy products and services or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think this, if anything, is going to, you know, it's only going to mm -hmm. get bigger. Um, and, and, you know, what it looks like in the future is probably going to be things like 360 video and, you know, really interesting stuff like that. So um, I think it's just going to accelerate. It's just going to get bigger. All right. So it's not just the good that we know about social media. We know that sometimes there's been some sort of misinformation and uh, with the different softwares that are being released time and again, like Photoshop, uh, you know, we are seeing quite a lot of misleading uh, updates on social media. So how do we get against the risks if we are going to get to a point where uh, governments or authorities are also embracing social media for the greater good and not for the bad. Um, First, I think the way Moses has put it, um, social media has always been there. Back then, uh, you know, when we used to send smoke screens and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're going to go backwards anytime soon. And I don't think the element of a social media being a threat or, you know, trying to, to as you put it, trying to, you know, create a conflict in how we engage. Conflicts have always been there in terms of our communication from back then. Social media basically is just a platform. And what I think is, uh, one, I don't think our government is actually using social media the way it's supposed to use. You know, the way you see the president engaging, he's, he doesn't know how to engage. You know, telling me or telling us where he was yesterday and who he was meeting mm -hmm. and not really engaging when people ask questions, that's not using social media. You see, the biggest problem with brands, uh, uh, celebrities, uh, media houses, is they've forgotten the element of convergence. Mm -hmm. And convergence is actually being defined and determined by the consumer when the consumer, it's like a community. Yes. People want to be engaged, people want to be spoken to. So first and foremost, I think our government needs to learn how to use social media. It means engage to people. It's no longer a threat because so I think- how, how is that going to happen? Do they need social to Social media in questions? Kenya is, is, is over seven billion industry, yeah. for example. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at companies like Scan Group, how much they're raking in just in terms of social media alone, it's, it's a big potential. For some of us who are creating jobs for other people, you know, Moses can actually attest to it in terms of how much companies are spending mm -hmm. to be able to communicate. It's, it's in billions. So I think the positives outweigh the negatives. And the element is how do you, one, look at the element of legislation. Two, how do you actually enforce the element of regulation? Mm -hmm. And three, who actually the people you're actually talking to? Because when I see parliament being told that social media is a threat to national security, and you look at the people actually being informed and people who, they don't have Facebook accounts, yeah. they, 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 they don't have Twitter, they, they don't know what a trending topic is, uh, they, they, they don't even know that the police is using social media. For the last four years, we've mm -hmm. tried to get the police to engage using social media, map crime using social media, map where, where, you know, like using social media, you can actually be able to tell where you need to allocate resources. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and any brand, any company, any president, any CEO, celebrity can actually use social media to know where I need to allocate resources based on social media. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think uh, on this panel, we should have had a government representative. A government and, and representative, Yes, exactly. and I'm not talking about Itumbi, I'm sure honestly. we're going to have another conversation about I want someone from the ICT ministry, yeah. someone who can actually be able to understand exactly, because this is where policy is actually being formulated. Mm -hmm. and, and when parliament is told that social media is a national security, mm -hmm. I think first let's look at the pros of social media. So they're, they're like more 100. pros to social media. They're like 100 they to 1 All right. in terms of cons. Mm -hmm. Because when you <laughs> remove social media, me and you will still fight. 
Me and you will still quarrel each other. All right, I'll still Rita, pick up my phone and Rita, let me come to you. Um, when you look at the different campaigns that uh, social media has been able to do very successfully, um, what comes to your mind when you're looking at the future uh, of social media in Kenya today? Okay, when, from my point of view where I come from, I'm a marketing person actually. Mm -hmm. And um, when I look at a brand and it's able to communicate the right way, for example, on social media, uh, that's when the, the engagement starts, yeah. whereby they understand what the consumer expects from them. And if you're having an issue, where do you not keep quiet? If, for example, the power goes off, it doesn't mean that just because we tweeted the power is off doesn't mean you should not tweet back and say something is happening. Mm -hmm. So that engagement is what we're seeing and will continue, for example. So the future in Kenya in regards to brands growing on social media, there are so many that have grown just by use of social media. You actually don't even have to have a building to, or an office to actually, have, uh, to actually have consumers. We've seen a lot of, um, should I say, ladies selling clothes on Instagram. Online. And we can see all this And there have been online. questions about yeah. whether or not those online vendors yeah. uh, remit taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, it, uh, I cannot answer for them, <laughs> but I believe on, give on to the, Caesar what belongs taxes. to Caesar. That's yeah. No, you see, on, the, on yeah. the element of taxes, um, and, and, and care is online, and, mm. and I think, you see, when um, you talk about taxes, at what level should I start paying taxes? Mm. One, uh, public education on how a tax regime works is mm -hmm. actually missing, mm -hmm. and care should actually take advantage to be able to educate people. Because right. when you take a bus and, and, and a long track and you say we're doing civic education across the country on taxes. Honestly, I'm not going to find time to come and sit down in, in some county hall to be too allowed to do taxation. But if you do a video, for example, because yeah. social media is changing how we're getting information. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get a video from Ubuye, from Garissa, on an issue, and you know, it goes viral. So and those I are some of the opportunities that say uh, and, and I think, I think we shouldn't looking be looking into. at whether the vendors are paying taxes or not first. All Let right. them grow first. Mm. Let them su supersede 10 million turnover in a month. Then we can now be able to come in and say, you know what, we've let you grow for the well, last two years. Then we can start taxing. Because I think the moment 10 million is, is too high a figure. Not in other words, you're telling no, me. No, not really. Because, I mean, uh, it's, it's mm -hmm. business is very expensive. Mm -hmm. Well, from, from my point of view, business is very expensive. And I think there's too much regulation in the country. And I think we need to nurture people. Let, let them sell. Let them make that profit where they can be able to grow. Then I, now I, I we think can that could actually pause another conversation because why would someone who is not on social media be required to pay taxes as soon as they start to realize profits? And then you have to wait for the one online uh, to get to 10 million shillings before they can start paying taxes. I think that's a conversation we can have at another time. Uh, but Moses, I'm going to give you the last word uh, here so you can tell us um, what we should expect when it comes to social media, the do's and don'ts uh, from the tech point of view. I think there's several um, trends emerging, mm -hmm. yeah. and I think there's a statistic that was shared by uh, Cisco, yeah. who do the networking of all the networks in the world, and mm -hmm. they were saying that by 20, I think 2018 or 2019, 80% uh, of internet traffic will be video, mm -hmm. which means you know platforms like YouTube and so forth will be, um, you know, key drivers behind that. The other thing is that we have what they call Generation Z. Yeah. And generation Z or Z is people who are currently between the ages of uh, 3 and 20. This generation actually uses five screens concurrently. So they watch the TV, they're on a tablet, they're on a computer, yeah. uh, they're on their phone and so forth. And this generation it behaves in different ways. Um, they have an attention span of eight seconds. So when you look at all these elements, you know, what you're seeing is that you know, video is going to be massive. Uh, so brands now have... Uh, a lot of pressure on them to start creating video content. Number two, this new consumer market that's coming through, mm -hmm. you know, the three to 18 year old or 20 years old, um, don't read content. They watch videos and watch pictures, very visual. Yeah. Uh, and then they don't have the attention span. So I think that's going to sort of define a lot of what the content is going to be. Then lastly, I think, uh, maybe to pick up from where Steve uh, mentioned a point about content, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, social media, I think, was never really initially meant to be just about commercial engagement. It was always about people talking to people and brands need to find uh, the right tone of voice when they're on social media mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. they don't come across like a, uh, a monologue media. They're actually people. The brands are actually like people. So I think that conversational approach is something that will make brands successful right. um, by actually playing 
the way they should in social media. Great. Well, uh, that's a good way to end this conversation. And we look forward to hosting you again for uh, yet another conversation on social media, the impact it is having. I'm sure you agree or disagree uh, with my panelists this afternoon, but you can leave your thoughts as well on our Twitter handle at KTN News. We've been speaking to Steve Baker, who is a financial analyst and financial blogger, uh, Rita Njuguna, who is part of the organizing team for the Social Media Week uh, Independent that's coming up in September. Uh, you might want to look out for that one. And uh, Moses Kemibaro, who is the founder for Dot Savvy. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you.